Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of Learning Simplified. In this uh, video, we're going to understand more about uh, Oracle X-ray data and the science behind it. Okay, so let us try to understand first the traditional concept of a database. So what we have, let's assume that it is a two-node rack, okay, real application cluster, where you have uh, node one and node two, and then you have an interconnect between those two nodes. We are having those two nodes because of uh, high availability. Then obviously you are going to connect this to the storage, to an external storage. All databases have an external storage. And obviously on top of this, you are going to have a Oracle database software installed. So this is how traditional databases work and for this you have to contact a lot of vendors. So for example, you will need uh, to contact IBM, for example, for their hardware uh, processors, their operating system EIX. Then you need to contact uh, a storage specialist, could be Hitachi, could be Dell and so on. And then obviously you will have the Oracle database and then the networking guys comes in to actually plug all these uh, uh, machines together. So this is how the traditional database works. So let's see the concept of exadata. Now exadata, as the uh, word suggests, it is actually a combination of all of them put together. Okay, so these are already pre-configured. So when you order for an Oracle exadata, all of these comes together pre-configured. So in this case, you're going to have a two node rack. Okay, uh, there could be cases where you get a four node or an eight node rack as well. We will see later in this course. But however, this is a pre-configured network. So which means that it has X nodes, could be two, four or eight. It has an operating system, which in this case obviously would be Oracle Linux because it's an Oracle product. It will have Intel processors. It will have a storage, which is closely tied with it. And there's something called InfiniBand networks. Now these InfiniBand networks are powerful networks with high bandwidth and low latency, which actually ensures that there is uh, immense transfer of uh, speed, immense uh, speed in the transfer of data. And finally, Oracle database. So you get something which is out of the box. So what are the advantages of Excel data? Now, from the very fact that everything is pre-assembled, it means that it leads to quick deployment. And there is an extreme performance by way of faster I.O. because we are using an all flash storage option. Okay, so there is an option of flash plus disk, but all flash is the preferred option. An interesting thing is we can offload some SQL processing to the storage from the database. So that gives you the, the power of uh, the storage to do some kind of powerful transactions or queries. It has the fastest cluster interconnect. So the two nodes have to be connected by something called an, as an interconnect. And the infinity band ensures that we get a high bandwidth and low latency. And obviously the constant update with the latest Intel chips. So as we go generation by generation, we get more powerful Intel chips as the next slide is going to show. So this tells you a little bit of the history of uh, the Exadata right from the beginning. So it all started in the year 2008 when Oracle partnered with Hewlett Packard and got out the first machine, which is V1. Okay, and as we went along the journey, slowly uh, due to the acquisition of uh, Sun, uh, we had Sun servers. And finally, obviously all these files we have been partnering with, uh, Oracle has been partnering with Xeon servers. Okay, and uh, if you look at it, these, on all these parameters, whether it is storage or flash or CPU, on all these parameters, there has been a dramatic increase. So we actually started with, for example, a storage of uh, 168 TB, and now we are actually in 0.35 petabytes. So it's a 14x growth. And similarly, you can see there's growth in almost every parameter. So this is the history of the growth from V1 to X8. Let's look at um, an X8-2. So X8 is the generation and dash 2 is the stands for the number of sockets which are there. So let's try to understand the naming convention here. So what it means is that for a given database server, for a given node, so let's say there's a two node rack. So that means there are two servers. Each of those servers is going to have two processors 
and each of the processor will have 24 cores so total of 48 you will have 48 cores in one node so if you have two node it's going to be 48 plus 48 96 okay and it has got a default memory of 384 which can be actually you can ramp it up to 1.5 then obviously there's a disk and there's some other network uh, 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 jargons actually here and then obviously it comes with a storage server as well we'll not go deep into the uh, into the storage aspect of it so now what are the configurations available now you can have a eighth rack and a quarter rack so in both of them, actually, you have actually two nodes. So what's the difference between 8th rack and quarter rack? In the 8th rack, you will have lesser number of cores because you will not have two sockets. You will have only one socket. Okay, that's the reason. So these are 8th rack, which means it is two node. So quarter rack is also two nodes. In half rack, you have got a four node rack. And then the, the mighty full rack is going to have eight nodes. So eight nodes will have 384 cores. Why? Because it will be 8 into, and each server, as I said, is going to be 2 into 24. So that's how the calculation is arrived at. So these are the four combinations which are possible in case of an x82. x88. So if you see, in x82, we had two sockets that is two processors but here in x88 you have got eight sockets eight into 24 cores intel xeon eight to six eight processors okay and then you have a storage as well so however the configurations are much more limited here you have got a half rack and a full rack and interestingly here half rack and full rack both of them come with two nodes so whenever uh, somebody says we have a half rack you should actually ask whether it is an x82 or an x88 because the number of nodes are actually driven by the uh, the number of sockets it has so hopefully this would give you an idea of how an x82 and an x88 uh, specs works out to be so let's do a brief here x82 has got two sockets meaning each server has got two processors having 24 cores each an x88 has got 8 sockets, meaning each server has got 8 processes having 24 cores each. Okay, so actually depending on your workload, whether it's an OLTP or if it's going to be a mixed workload, you can actually choose which one you want. So thank you and uh, hope this has been a, a good understanding of this uh, um, series. And um, uh, in the next series, we're going to understand more about Oracle Autonomous Database. Now that's important because autonomous database is actually built on the foundation of Exadata. So just do like, share and subscribe to Learning Simplified for more such videos.